Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing well. We're gonna talk about Ben Bernanke and Jerome Powell, literally two of the smartest guys in the world. It is true, I read it on the internet. And the reason why they're smart is because they could be totally wrong, lie to you, get away with it, everybody, uh, the markets crash and everything goes bad, and then everybody forgets. Like everything they said disappeared, but not today, because the Economic Ninja has some proof. And we're gonna show you, and we're gonna go back in time to when the Ninja was a young Ninja, just in training, in real estate training, uh, flipping homes and, and what he had to go through, what he had to endure. But first, I have to tell you, smashing the like button is literally probably the coolest thing in the world. If you don't wanna smash the like button, then hit it three times. I actually figure it out really quick that that's not what you liked. But if you do like it, tap it once. It's super awesome. We'll get the algo out there, all right. Mrs. Ninja's trying to call me. That means we got to make this video quick. Here we go. This is out of CNBC. I'm going to link the story below. Bernanke says the Fed's slow response to inflation was a mistake. Isn't that sort of mean? The guy that takes over for you, just like, hey, you did this wrong, that wrong, that wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. So that's, let's see what happens when you point at someone. You got four fingers pointing back at yourself. Actually, not the way I point. Only three. Here we go. Former Fed chair Ben Bernanke said the central bank erred, 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 in waiting to address inflation. He said one of the, this is a quote, one of the reasons was that they wanted to not shock the markets. That's what he told CNBC. And then Bernanke spoke a day ahead of his latest book release. Oh, now we get it. You just want to sell books. You want to look really smart. Well, here, check this out. The ninja's going to make you look super smart. Here's a, um, a video we're going to show you. It's probably going to be backwards. Okay, it's the way I do things. A Ben Bernanke speaking. So let's just listen to him. And this was in 2005 when I started selling all my real estate because I didn't believe this moron. All right, here we go. Ben, there's been a lot of talk about a housing bubble, particularly you know from the Fed, from all sorts of... of uh, uh different places. Can you give us your view as to whether or not there is a housing bubble out there? Well, unquestionably, housing prices are up quite a bit. I think it's important to note that uh, fundamentals are also very strong. We've got a, a growing economy, uh, jobs, incomes. We've got very low mortgage rates. Uh, we've got uh, demographics uh, supporting uh, housing uh, growth. We've got uh, restricted supply in some places. So it's certainly understandable that prices would go up. It's like what's happening up. right now. Um, I don't know whether prices are exactly where they should be, but I, I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, much of what's happened is supported by the strength of the economy. Tell me, what is the worst case scenario? So we have so many economists coming on our air and saying, oh, this is a bubble and it's going to burst and this is going to be a real issue for the economy. Some say it could even cause a recession at some point. What is the worst case scenario if, in fact, we were to see prices come down substantially across the country? So this is 2006. Well, I, I guess I don't buy your premise. It's a pretty unlikely possibility. We've never had a decline in house prices on a nationwide, nationwide basis. So what I think is more likely is that... We could be here all night with the stupid things he said. You want to know why? Because he's 100% wrong. But you want to know what you're not going to see that information in? His book that he wants to sell to you right now. He wants to come across like he's the smartest dude in the room, but he was actually not. And trust me, he is a smart guy. He did know the markets were going to crash, but he also knew most people would forget. And so my point being is this. You have Fed chairs, ex-Fed chairs coming after the current Fed chair, telling him how he did everything wrong. And here's the truth. Bernanke said, and he quoted, that uh, the Fed slowed their response to inflation because they didn't want to crash the market, and they're completely right. This is literally the worst uh, market that we have ever experienced in the history of America. He is right when he said at that time in 2005 that rates were at historic lows. Well, guess what? They were two years ago, even lower. As a matter of fact, we had seen almost, oh gosh, 40 trillion dollars of worldwide debt that was actually, was it notionally negative? For a certain period of time, around 2018 to 2019, uh, I don't remember. My, my mind's, I don't got the notes with me. I don't got my cardboard. Point being is this. We had a lot of debt that was at zero or actually negative, all right? We also had historically low mortgage rates. And the only reason you saw a blow up in the housing prices, well, first off, people had a lot of cash that they were just given by the government, and they had a lot of FOMO. And they all of a sudden figured out because the interest rates, the mortgage rates dropped, they plummeted to all time hot lows. I mean, I literally saw mortgages in the twos for a 30 year conventional fixed rate mortgage. They said, now is the time. And they went after it. And there wasn't this instantaneous uh, housing shortage. Why? Because the population didn't 
and instantaneously, boom, what you found was people that were living in apartments or renting. They said, I can do it now, I can afford it, and they started to run in. And then they ran in more and more. And you couple that with the institutional buying, and it was a disaster. But that's actually exciting. Why? Because I've said it uh, many times before, I'm gonna say it again. You make more money when economies collapse than you do when they're doing well. Okay, anybody can make money when things are going well. It takes a real professional to keep their cool, keep their level head when everything's going crazy around them and they're up buying up assets. Trust me, I know what it's like to buy up assets and people say I'm crazy. They called me crazy at $500 Bitcoin. They called me crazy when I was buying real estate in 2001. My point being is this, these are the days to call a spade a spade. Ben Bernanke, he's a spade. He's literally that guy that's a little pointing fingers right now so he could sell his book. And I just showed you just two clips and there's a myriad of them, a plethora, numerous. I don't even know if I'm using the right word. Guys, put in the comment section a better word for many. I have many examples of how him and other federal, uh, uh, you know, federal, federal, what's, what am I thinking? Central bank, Federal Reserve chairmen have been wrong in the past. And this one is gonna be the mother of all screw ups. And I, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna be exciting to watch a mortgage rate in the 20s. I know people don't believe me, but hey, people would never have believed in 1979 that you would see a mortgage hit 18%. But it did. And it did because of a crisis of inflation. But this time, not only do we have heavier inflation heading our way, and, and right now we're right about almost, we're almost level with the peak. We're almost level with the peak inflation from the late 70s. We're about to blow past it because we have, I think it's 10 times more money created since then. And we have a global bond collapse happening right now, not only in America, but also over in China. Oh yeah, and I guess we'll throw in some wars too. It's getting nutty guys. So the point is this, keep your heads up. Don't get into any crazy debt right now. Call a spade a spade. These people are, are not wanting you to remember the past and get ready for some awesome, awesome opportunities. All right, now with that being said, again, I thank you all. By the time you're seeing this, I might this channel might be cresting the 200,000 subscriber mark. And I wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's not because of me, it literally is because of you, because you guys, like 200,000 of you had to hit that subscribe button. And I truly, genuinely appreciate it. I know the videos aren't getting pushed out. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that are happening that I can't even talk about, uh, but uh, that's just the truth. And I thank you for watching. This is one of the most watched uh, channels on all of YouTube uh, finance. Uh, we're hitting, I think right now this month is 3.6 million views this month alone. And I thank you so much for that. I cannot, I cannot tell you what a joy and pleasure it's been to meet you, uh, to get to know so many of you. And I literally plan on traveling the entire world as long as you guys will have me to meet you guys in person and to try and keep you smiling during this crazy thing. Now look guys, as we leave, I just want you to remember one thing. Hitting that subscribe button is even better than the Catalina wine mixer. And you know that thing's pretty cool. Put down in the comment section what movie that's from. All right, guys, that being said, The Economic Ninja is out.